let this be a normal field trip? With a friend? No way! Cruising on down Main Street, you're relaxed and feeling good. Next thing that you know, you'll see it. Octopus in the neighborhood, surfing on the sound wave, swinging through the stars. Yeah. Take a left to Joe and Justin, pick your second right, that's more than the magic school bus. Alligator nostril, climb on the magic school bus. Make a plane turn to Take that. And I'm magic school bus. Rock the river of love. I'm magic school bus. Such a fine thing to do. So strap your bones right to the seat. Come on in and don't be shy. Come on. Just to make your day complete. You might get baked into a pie on the magic school bus. Step inside, it's a wild ride. Come on, ride on the magic school bus. Okay, Ralphie. It's going to be a model of the solar system. Neat, huh, Janet? Uh, I hate to tell you, Cousin Arnold, but when my class built one, the sun was so huge we had to hang it from the flagpole. And you had all nine planets? That's right, Keisha. Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto. My class already studied the solar system. I bet you your class didn't learn about the aliens that live on the planets. For your information, Ralphie, Earth is the only planet that can support life as far as we know. And how far do you know? <laughs> <laughs> really far, because I got straight A's on all my tests, and this proves it. If you already know so much, Janet, why did you come to visit our class? Because Arnold told me all about your field trips, Dorothy Ann. What did he say? That they were, and I quote, highly unusual. And you know what I said? Prove it. She's really nice once you get to know her. Oh, good morning, class. Have you all met Arnold's cousin, Janet? Yes, Miss Frizzle. My teacher doesn't dress like that. That's nothing. Sometimes the frizz looks totally outrageous. Well, since we're lucky enough to have a guest today, I'd say it's a perfect time for a field trip. Hey, cuz, now's your chance to prove it. I wonder where we're going today. Inside a rotten log? Been there. To the bottom of the ocean. Done that. We're going to the planetarium? Hardly unusual, Arnold. The frizz taking us on a normal field trip? Believe me, that's unusual. Mm hmm, hmm, how odd. Closed today. Closed? Hmm, well, looks like we'll just have to go back to school. Oh, oh no! no. Some field trip, Arnold. You know what? My teacher would have called ahead because my teacher plans ahead. My teacher never makes mistakes. My teacher is a zillion times better than Nobody you. is better than Ms. Frizzle. Oh, yeah? Prove it. Stop the bus! <laughs> Yes, Arnold? Isn't there, you know, someplace else you could take us? You mean another planetarium? Well, sort of, but bigger. Bigger? You know, the big one. Oh, <laughs> Arnold, why didn't I think of that? T minus five and counting. Four, three, two, one. Blast off! Welcome to Outer Space Class, the only planetarium open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And how are all my astronauts doing? <laughs> <laughs> We're weightless. We're in trouble. No, Arnold. We're in orbit around the Earth. Hmm, let's see. 
see now, we are just about there. Wonderful! Let the tour begin! We're coming up to the sun. Look how huge it is! Class, are you all wearing your special heavy-duty sunblock 8,000 sun goggles? I wonder how many Earths would fit in the sun. Over a million. Hold on to your goggles! Yeah! So, class, we've traveled from Earth, around the sun, and now we are on our way to... Mercury, the closest planet to the sun. When I tell my class, they're going to be so jealous. Wow, we're landing! <laughs> of course. Told you, Janet. We hardly weigh anything compared to my old planet, Earth. I wonder if that means there's less gravity pulling on us here. Exactly, Keisha. Good thinking. <laughs> Come along, class. Follow the bouncing lizard. This way, please. <laughs> Bet I can jump higher than you, Dorothy Ann. You're on. I won first place in my class jumping contest. Here's my blue ribbon to prove it. Wait till I tell my class I won the jumping contest on Mercury, too. But you know what they're going to say? What? Prove, prove it. it. How on Earth? I mean, how am I going to prove I was on Mercury? Man, the aliens on Mercury sure make big footprints. Nothing can live on Mercury, Ralphie. It's too hot and dry during the day. And according to my research, way below freezing at night. And day or night, there's no air, which makes it extremely difficult to breathe. Well, something had to make tracks this big. Something did, Ralphie. A meteorite. Hmm. Meteorites are pieces of stone or iron that fall from space. Come along, class. If the ones that hit the planet are called meteorites, what do you call the ones that miss? What? Meteorites! <laughs> wow! Janet, what are you doing? Hey, watch it! Eureka! My very own meteorite! When I show this to my class, it'll prove I was on Mercury! Oh, Janet. Right on top of We're now approaching... Venus, the second planet from the sun. I can't wait, I can't wait, I can't wait! Cool, Venus has clouds, just like Earth. Wow, what a view! Uh, I think I'll go sit down now. Class. Hey, uh, I feel like I weigh the same here as I do on Earth. That's because Venus is about the same size as Earth and has about the same gravity. Come on, Arnold. <sighs> Check out those weird clouds. Oh, good, a little rain will cool the place down. Except that's not rainwater in those clouds, Wanda. It's sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid? Mm-hmm. It's a deadly poison. We're perfectly safe, as long as we keep our spacesuits on. I like rocks, but this is ridiculous. Do you have to have all of these? Absolutely. If this doesn't prove I was on Venus, nothing will. We're now passing through the orbit of the third planet, which is Earth. Look, it's so beautiful. And there's air we can breathe. And it's not too hot or not too cold. The only one that supports life. And coming up is Mars. The fourth planet. Right, Ms. Frizzle? Very good, Janet. Ooh, you certainly do know your planets. I got straight A's on all my reports. We know, we know enough already. Oh, here we are, class. Take a look at Mars. <gasps> How marvelous. 
It looks like the whole place is rusting. No wonder it's called the Red Planet. As you can see, the soil here is colored by red dust, which has iron in it. Look at those cliffs of ice. Ice climbing, anyone? Why? Why? No thanks. Too cold. Too slippery. Too right. Who wants to waste time climbing up an old ice cap anyway? Come on, cuz we've got Jenna, work to do. Stop. Maybe I should have stayed home today. We've made it to the top. I wonder if Mars could have been another Earth if it had water and wasn't so cold. Maybe, but as I always say, Mars is the best place for ice cream. Ice cream? Where? Here. Ice cream. Ice block. Great! Now for some red dust. On Earth, I had simple little chores: emptying waste baskets, feeding the fish, clearing the table. <laughs> the only thing is, we've been to Mercury, Venus, and Mars so far, and we haven't seen a single. <gasps> Which way's the bus? Arnold! Oh, I knew it was him the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Mars, ice, and dust. Enough to prove we were on Mars. Ah, uh, no need to thank me. I don't think there's much chance of that, Janet. Look, a flying potato. Huh? huh? That's no potato. It's an asteroid, Ralphie. A hunk of space rock, smaller than a moon, but bigger than a meteorite. It's part of the asteroid belt, a ring of asteroids which divides our solar system into the inner and outer planets. Class, just an unexpected orbital interruption. Let's just see where we are, shall we? <gasps> the belt! It's gone! We're lost in space! We're lost in space! As I always say, there's nothing a good space mechanic can't fix. Wrench! Wrench! Pliers! <gasps> An asteroid! Uh, uh, I mean pliers. Screwdriver! <laughs> An asteroid! Perfect proof! <laughs> Miss Frizzle, we've got half of the map now. Good. One more adjustment. Your claw on that button, Liz. Up, up, and the way! Um, <laughs> bad news. Janet, we're not only lost in space, we're lost in space without a teacher. What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? Miss Frizzle to class, Miss Frizzle to class, come in. No reason to panic. I'd never leave you. I'm right here. I'll give you a hint. I'm headed for one of the outer planets. But that's the half of the map that we don't have. Oh, good. You can fill it in as you go along. You've got a navigator who knows the neighborhood. We do? Of course. Janet. <laughs> Miss Frizzle's down there. Wow, which planet is that? One of the gas giants. 
What is that red blotch? It's a storm, thousands of miles wide, and the only planet with a big red spot is Jupiter. Jupiter, the fifth planet. Oh, I did it! Way to go! Now, if I could just get some of that red spot, it would prove I've been to Jupiter. Miss Frizzle to bus, Miss Frizzle to bus, over. Jupiter is the largest planet, but don't worry, Carlos, because I'm not on it. Then where are you? I've got to have some of that red spot. Right? I knew I should have stayed home today. Miss Frizzle to class, Miss Frizzle to class. Come in, please. Miss Frizzle, Janet almost got us. I got them some of Jupiter's red spot. Did you say red hot? <laughs> You're not even warm yet. The outer planet I'm on is very cold and dark. The colder you get, the warmer you'll be to finding me. Oh, great. Now it's a riddle. Off we go again. There's no other gas giant with such beautiful rings. Saturn, the sixth planet. Well, it must be cold down there because Saturn is pretty far away from the sun. But Miss Frizzle said cold and dark. It could be very, very dark on Saturn. Oh no, you don't. You just want to grab more stuff. Hey, I'm just trying to help. If you want to play, let's find Miss Frizzle without a map for the rest of your life. That's fine with me. Janet's right. Miss Frizzle could be on Saturn, couldn't she? Okay, Arnold, but it's your job to keep your crazy cousin under control. Miss Frizzle to bus, Miss Frizzle to bus, over. Oh, Liz and I can't wait to show you all the stars we can see out here. Oh, it's so beautiful. Come back. What about a hint? She just gave us a hint, Ralphie. She did? Yeah, she can see the stars. Which means she can't be on Saturn. She can never see the stars through all those storms and clouds. Planet number seven, coming up. That must be Uranus. You can tell by its tilted faint ray rings and its blue-green gases. See, cuz, Uranus doesn't do a thing for me. So you can get off me, okay? Sorry, Janet, but I have to stay on top of the situation. The Frizz couldn't see the stars through those clouds either. No way she's on Uranus. To the next planet. Wait! I need proof! And we need Miss Frizzle. Step on it, Wanda. Hey, watch it! Looks like another planet surrounded by gases. And it's blue. Blue! My favorite color! Forget it, Janet. Miss Frizzle couldn't see the stars from down there. Go, Wanda! No! Now where do we go? She's not on Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, or Neptune. That means there's only one planet left. Which one? I'll tell you after Arnold gets off of it. <laughs> right, listen carefully. Miss Frizzle is on the farthest planet from the sun, Pluto. To Pluto! Pluto is cold and dark, all right. And clear. They've got to be here. Find us. Right, Liz? Sure can see the stars from here. 
I wonder where the sun is. See that tiny star over there? Uh-huh. Well, that's it. That's the sun? Mm-hmm. No wonder Pluto's so cold and dark. Look how far away the sun is. So, the colder we got, the warmer we got to finding you. It was a good hint, if I do say so myself. you. It's proof. Nobody will believe me without it. I'll believe you. They'll believe you. Janet, you want proof? I'll give you proof. Here's proof of what will happen to you if you stay here with your stuff. Arnold, no! Thanks, Janet. Arnold, it's the least I can do. If it weren't for you, I'd still be on Pluto with all my stuff. I don't need to prove anything. That was the most amazing field trip ever. You know it. I know it. If no one else believes me, that's their problem. Right on. Way to go, Janet. You said it. Achoo! <laughs> Attention all students. We've just learned that scientists have made their first contact with an alien from outer space. An alien? Wow. Ralphie was right. Oh, my. The alien, claiming to be from Pluto, has no. called to complain about a pile of litter that was recently dumped on his planet. Ralphie! <laughs> As I always say, class, you're out of this world. <laughs> School bus? Is this the magic school bus? Magic school bus. 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 I wonder what magic school bus. Oh, we're spending hours with the magic school bus. Hello, Magic School Bus. Don't you mean the Twilight Zone? That show had more science fiction than fact. Well, we realize a school bus would make a lousy spacecraft. I'll give you that one, but only because you call it a Magic School Bus. But there's no way any spacecraft could visit all nine planets in a day. <laughs> well, if we did it in real time, you would be a grown-up by the time we got to Pluto. Speaking of Pluto, scientists don't really know what its surface is like. You're right, but until one of you kids grows up to be an astronomer or an astronaut and figures out what Pluto is like, we have to guess. Also, Pluto right now isn't the ninth planet from the sun. Until 1999, it's temporarily inside Neptune's orbit. Right again. What about those funny-looking sun goggles? I happen to know you should never look directly at the sun. Hurts your eyes. You're one bright kid. So how come some of the time the kids were floating around in the bus? Well, when the bus was coasting with the rocket engines off, they were weightless, like astronauts. Oh, yeah. So how come they were able to walk around in the bus sometime? Well, would you, uh, believe in artificial gravity geoscopic confabulator? <laughs> no way. Okay, you got me. We just fudged it. And don't think I didn't notice that you had all the planets lined up in a neat little row? <laughs> oh, that. Well, it's true that planets are very rarely all lined up like that. Yeah, like almost never. But it's so much easier to keep track of them all that way. You wouldn't want us to have forgotten one, would you? And another thing, if an astronaut ever does make it to Pluto, she'd better not take her helmet off. You think they'd end up with more than a cold, huh? She'd end up a block of ice, or worse. Which reminds me why I called in the first place. Yes? I'm still waiting for someone to get that pile of litter off my planet. 
It's a wild girl. 